Now, let me take it this way. When we, when you introduce yourself, you talked about you being a Pan-Africanist. So Pan-Africanism has been on uh, for more than uh, 70 years. Okay. And uh, I see, I, I, I I'll be honest. I still don't understand it. Okay. So what is the status of Pan-Africanism and where is it actually going? When we talk about Pan-Africanism, a lot of people think Pan-Africanism had to do with only Africa. Okay. But Pan-Africanism is about humanity. Okay. It's about the welfare of the people. And when we talk about the people, I'm talking about the black race. Okay. And any related race. I'm talking about Africa, her people in Africa and in other continents. When we talk about Pan-Africanism, we talk about the Aborigines in Australia. We talk about Aborigines in India. We talk about Aborigines in America. We talk about humanity in general. Now, sometimes the way we take it, people think we are fighting the whites. Nobody is fighting the whites. One of the key things I want the European or the Western world to understand is this. For over 600 years, I read as history that you built the first fort on the shores of Ghana, the Elimina Castle. To date, the resources that have been stolen from Africa, the human beings that have been killed, all in the name that you want to possess our land, is something that I want to point out to the Western world, that you cannot develop yourself and call us poor over our resources. Today, look at what is happening in Congo. If you stand up and talk, they tag you a bad person. Look at what happened years back, apartheid in South Africa. Look at all over what has happened. Now, no nation in this world is greater than the other. Likewise, no continent is better than the other. You can't steal the resources of Africa, put Africa and a uh, growing population in poverty, Co control their financial system, control their resources, and control everything around them. Now, look at the situation where look at the hunger in Africa. Now somebody grows up. Now let me let me let me let me share a scenario. I was telling a white friend that while growing up, because of no money in the house, sometimes I could you know some of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you heard of the Ghanaian food called Banku? Yeah, sure. My see my 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 uh, my brother, okay, when I was teenager. Is Theophilus Koku Kaku Adade. Okay, so uh, I, I grew up with a Ghanaian, my brother. So I know about uh, oh. all this food. So you can imagine just eating banku, and the only thing you can supplement banku with is just a fish. Mm. Or sometimes you could just put sugar in the banku so that you can eat without stew. Mm without fish. That is poverty. <laughs> that what, is what, poverty. What, what, in is ban what, what is Banku made, made from? Banku is made from corn. Okay. 
Now, you can imagine, I was sharing this story with a friend who is an European. And she said, what? How long did you eat this food? <laughs> Then I said, I, it's uncountable years that you could virtually go to school with just one uniform. Mm. You could actually go to school without even books. But where is the timber from? The rubber, where did they get it from? Okay, we're talking about gold, our natural resources. The question is, you come, you carry the gold out of the system. Now we are not seeing any effect of the gold. We still have classrooms that are under, on, there are no development, they are under trees. We still have students in Africa who don't have access to communities, who don't have access to potable water yet. Mining companies are drilling gold from these communities. So my issue here is put humanity first. That is Pan-Africanism for me. Okay. So if we are talking about Pan-Africanism, remember Africa is the origin of life. Africa is the origin of life. Okay. And if Africa is the origin of life, Africa is also the origin of civilization. So I don't want the, the concept of people trying to tell us that they are the ones that came to the Europeans did not come to civilize Africa. Yes, they didn't civilize us through the Bible. <laughs> when you go to Cape Coast Castle today, where the top, the, the burden, the, the room, the hall that they used to worship God, under it were where they keep the slaves and kill the slaves. Mm. So they should not tell us that they introduced us to the Bible. Before they came, to Africa, Africa has knowledge of God. Yeah. Africa has knowledge of Jesus. So they should not even talk about it. They didn't bring us civilization. They didn't bring us school system. Before they came, we had school. Their plan was they destroyed the US, ours and introduced the US. So when I'm fighting for Pan-Africanism, all I'm saying is let's embrace go back let's go back and embrace what we had and start from there okay it is no matter how wrong way we have gone it is not bad to turn back and take what god gave you and grow with it okay. that is the message of pan-africanism okay i mean hey the pan-africanism uh, message is let's look within us as africans we have the talent we have the intellect we have the wisdom, we have the skill, we have the resources. Let's begin to build ourselves, not waiting for a white man or not waiting for a stranger from somewhere to come and give us what we want or what we need to build. Let me tell you, so today, the only significance of Western, um, Western presence in Africa are forts and castles. Well, I, 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 would, I, I would disagree with you on that one. I would say now that hold on, hold on, hold on. I see, I agree. We, we are responsible for building Africa. That's not, yes. that's not a question. Now, we, Af Africa, Africa, when it comes to civilization, uh, civilization has gone from place to place to place to place to place, okay? Throughout human history, okay? Once upon a time, Egypt was, at, uh, uh, was on top, okay? And then it went into Asia, okay? Uh, and then China, India, then back to Europe, Okay, so uh, maybe if we do the right thing, we'll be the same, the next phase of uh, human civilization. Okay. Okay, let me ask you. You hold, were talking hold, about. Hold on, hold on. You were, you were talking about Egypt. Yes. 
you were talking about Egypt as if Egypt started civilization. See, I, but let I, me I, ask I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how. Yes. Now, civilization before started. Egypt, before Egypt, mm. do you know why Ethiopia? Do you know why Ethiopia still has their own Karanda to today? Tell me. When you read history, you will understand that there was an Ethiopia and Africa is Ethiopia. Yeah. Basically, Africa started from that angle. Ethiopia, Sudan, those region, yeah. right, was where we had innovations happening. Yeah. When you go to Ethiopia, you will find the oldest Bible. When you go to the Ethiopia, you will, you will see many architectural manuscripts. Yeah. So when we talk about civilization, sometimes they tell the civilization story as civilization started from Egypt. Remember, Egypt was not Egypt as it is the, what they call today. Yeah, all, all, right? over the, all, all over the world, uh, things have changed through, through our Things have history. changed. Yes. So what we are embracing is that what we are talking about Pan-Africanism here is we have gone, we are not following. Now, let me let me show you an agenda that is happening now. They said something called carbon credits, mm. climate change, mm. carbon credits. Mm. Now, people in Europe have factories. They have owned their turbans. They are producing, and we are in Africa. They said, embrace new energy. <laughs> what is renewable energy? Renewable energy means that you cannot power your factories. Yeah. See, on, on, that, on that point, see, on that point, okay, on that point, I, I disagree, okay? Uh, I, I, I say my, my, my stance is this, when it comes to that, is that Africa has abundant fossil fuel, okay, energy. And we, we must use what we have the technologies the technologies are very well known okay the technologies of the renewable uh, re re renewable energy is not is not well well known okay is not sustainable yet so we cannot base our development on that on that Okay. We have now, so that 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 is that that is clear. But what I'm, I'm I'm trying to get back to what what you said, that we didn't gain from the Europeans. Okay, I, and I I will tell you, that is not true. Okay, I I, I ask a, a question, what is uh your 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 the food you talked about? What was that again? Banco. Banco. I ask you what is it made from. You said corn. Now, I will tell you, my brother. See, many, many of the food we eat in Africa today, and we, we say they're African food, they were actually brought to us by the Europeans. I'm telling you. Including, okay, hold, me, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Including corn. The Europeans brought corn to us. Okay. Okay. Corn, Can I ask a question? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Corn came from Mexico. Okay. And it was brought to us by the Europeans. Now, uh, Ghana is one of the things that Ghana cherishes in their in the in ag agriculture is cocoa. Cocoa was brought to us by the Europeans. Now, now, um, how, how did how was cocoa brought to us by the Europeans? They 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 saw it from so from uh, South and South and North America, and during the the exploration time, and they they brought it to Africa. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go on. Have you read the story of Tatakwashi? No. Who Tell brought me about cocoa it. to Ghana? Tell me about it. Tatakwashi was the one who brought cocoa to Ghana. 
How? Tell me. And Tadakwashi got the cocoa beans, stole the cocoa beans from Fanado Koko. Tell me about it. So when we talk about even cocoa today in Ghana, you cannot talk about the history of cocoa in Ghana without mentioning the name of Tata Kwashi. Okay, tell me about it. I'm, 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 so, see, I, so, I like to know. I like to know things. So he was the first person who brought the seedling of cocoa okay. and planted it at Mampong. Where, where did he get it from? He got it from Fanel de Po. Who, who is that? Fanel de Po, I think, is it... Um, I will I will check the map. I think okay. it should be South America or something like that. Okay. So, but then, um, look at um, looking at it critically. Mm. Looking at it critically, we're talking about even cassava. Yes. The last time we we, we were told what, that was, was brought to us too. Was brought to us yeah. by the whites and all that. You know, let me tell you something. So the question here is this. Remember, Africa has existed long before the Europeans, the Portuguese. See, see, no, see. I'm coming. The, the no, 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 has, no, has always I'm existed. Coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. There's something that we have not been told. Mm. Remember, within the period of slave trade, about 13 million Africa. You just look at it. Look at the situation. What about about 13 million Africans? were taken out of Africa okay. in that era of, of time. Get yeah. the population. Then mm. you, you get it. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. I am not someone who is being brainwashed by the books we have read. Okay. The question is that before the Europeans came into Africa, Africans had life. Yeah, of course. Africans were... Africans were eating. Africans were not hungry. So the question is that if they are saying they are the ones who brought cassava. Now, let me ask you a question. If they brought cassava, how many products or food do they make from cassava? In, in, hold on. In, uh, in uh, South Africa, South America, they are... They are very many food made from cassava there. Who, who are South Americans? Remember, if you talk about South Americans, the Europeans were not South Americans. Yeah. The South Americans were originally indigenous Africans. Oh, come on. Uh, ho hold on, my oh, brother. Oh, hold on, oh, hold on. Oh, hold let's on. calm down. Let's hold on, calm hold down. On. You hold see? On. Hold on, let me, hold, hold on. See, Africa was the first place where human our, our species okay evolved so everybody on this earth eh, wants their 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 ancestry all come from africa okay. everybody every human okay. being okay every okay. human being on the earth comes originally came from africa so okay so even looking at if you're looking at the Bible, the Bible no, not, story, not the Bible. I'm not talking about Bible. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm coming. I'm coming. If you're looking at the Bible story, right? Even though it's good at the Bible story, remember, the Bible story was written long before even they said they brought Christianity to Africa. Now, what was the crop of Egypt? I don't know. Tell me. What was Egypt known for? Egypt was known for Egypt, which is Africa, mm -hmm. was known for all types of food. Now, have you asked yourself the technical know-how of how Egyptians will preserve a mummy for over 600, 700, 1,500 years without not eating, being eaten by termites? Do you know why they are digging the, the, the pyramids? There's a discovery, there's knowledge by those. Of, of course, you're back. <laughs> we, are, we are back from the commercial bit. Yes, so, yes, yes. For me. Yeah. It, now, see, let's, let's not waste time. See, for me, eh, for me, 
humanity started in Africa. Okay. So, see, I say this all the time on, on this, on this uh, uh, podcast. All human beings are Africans. Okay. Now, many of us are talk about slavery, slavery, colonialism, blah, blah, blah. I will tell you one thing. I will say this to you clearly, okay? And I, I, I want you to take it and, and think about it. Slavery was a human thing. It wasn't about Europeans. Every culture, society of human beings had slaves, including Africans. Hold on. Okay, so so the Europeans didn't teach Africans how to have slaves. We already had slaves. All they did, all they did is buy. And who sold them to them? We. We sold our brothers and sisters to the Europeans. Okay. And before the Europeans started buying slaves, the Arabs had been buying slaves for centuries. From Africa. So it wasn't the Europeans that started slave trade. Okay. It was already no, there. I, um... Good. Okay. Now, when, it, sorry, when it comes to knowledge, okay, technology, see, every civilization on this earth had knowledge, which with the next uh, group. The knowledge is transferred to them, and that's why we are here, okay? Because all of us have all contributed to where we are today. Fine, yeah. good. We, we that, all, I we, love that. See, see this is my this is my, my 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 take. All of us. So all of us. So at what one time or the other have contributed to where we are today, okay? So so what I'm saying. My own stand is that you see the polar knots feels they are more relevant than the polar. No, knots. no, see, see, my brother. But let me say but, this. See, we are the one. See, unfortunately, I was I will say this, and many people will be angry at me. Okay. Once upon a time, once upon a time, the whites okay thought they were superior. Once upon a time. Before then, the Arabs were more advanced than Europeans thought they were superior. That's human being. It's, it's is, very true. So this is human so being. What, what, I, what I'm preaching or what I'm saying. In terms of Pan Africanism, as I already defined Pan Africanism as humanity, yeah, taking humanity first is simply the advocacy of less what is good for the right hand is also good for the left hand. Okay, if the right hand washes the left hand, let the hot the right hand also washes the left hand. Yeah, okay, this is all I'm saying. Okay, equality. In terms of, let no one feel they are better than the other. Now, look at the development. When we talk about development, mm. look at a situation whereby parts of Africa still have children who have no access to education. Okay. Now, and the only thing that, that, that they can do is, you, you see one NGO, the name maybe USAID, you know, that is not what Africa needs. What Africa needs is through partnership for development. Okay. If we all want to see the world become better, and when we talk about through partnership, we don't want our financial system to be controlled by anyone. Okay. As I speak with you, we don't want to trade in other person's currency, and okay. we don't want others to see us as maybe our career, because the test, the true test of our economy is now determined by people. Okay. But we don't want that. Okay. L let me ask you, let me ask you a question. 
do you understand the history of money? Yeah. Oh, sorry. What, yeah. what I'm saying is that Africa should not be the field of raw materials. Mm. Africa should also be the field of factories. Yes. The field of technology. Yes. The field of industrialization. Yes. This is what I mean. Okay, let, let me ask a, a, a few questions, okay? And I, I'm asking this because I want my audience to take it away, okay? One, I ask you, uh, but you didn't hear, about understanding the history of money, okay? And how, how financial systems developed, okay? Because, see, we, we say things that, like, this, the system is against us, okay? But no, it's not. It's just the way it develops, okay? They didn't develop a system having in mind Africa to dis disadvantage Africa. Now, it was developed to, to benefit the de developers, okay? It was developed to benefit the de developers right but not to disadvantage africa now as africa grows and gets into the system there will be modifications to handle the the, the issues that africa brings okay so the point my, my point is this i want us not to Always. Oh, okay. Now, if, if we are talking of these financial systems here, mm. if we talk about the financial systems here today, let me ask a question. Mm. If Ghana needs money, yeah, where did they go? I don't know. Where? IMF. Okay. World Bank. Okay. If America needs money, what do they do? They print more papers. Okay. Okay, so what's okay. the issue? Now, the issue is that why can't Africa print their own papers? Okay, now, good. And then, oh, hold, hold if on, we hold are on, printing hold on, our... Hold on, hold on, that's the economics. If we yeah. are printing our own papers, we must also determine the price of which our resources must be bought. Okay, see, see, brother, that, that's why it's, it's important to understand how the, finance, the financial system developed. Right. See, if if Ghana or Nigeria decide to print more money, see, look at uh, uh, Argentina, right? Argentina has now about one fifty percent inflation. Do you know why? They were printing money. <laughs> okay. Now, now the question is. The question here is, why the inflation? Now, yeah. when we talk about inflation, now, when we talk about inflation, for me, for me, inflation is human-made. Yeah. Just, now, like, just like money, money was human-made. Yes. So what exactly. I'm trying to say is that, what I'm trying to say is that, look at the resources you have. Mm. Look at the resources you have. Okay. L let me ask Based you a on question the on, the, on the resources. Who, who, what made those things? What made them resources? Because before, before 200 years ago, okay, most of the things we talk about today <coughs> as resources, they have already, always been on the ground of Africa. Okay, they, they were always there, but they were not, never resources. Now, right. hold on, hold on. They have always been there, but they were never taught as resources. What made them resources? Demand. No, no. Before the, Innovation. Before, the before the demand, the use. Oh, there was use it. Yes. Okay, the use, and then how did the use come about? Innovation and technology. Okay, knowledge. Where did knowledge come from? 
What did what did what did <laughs> knowledge come? See that. See this is no, knowledge. No, 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 no. If we are talking about knowledge, knowledge comes from God, the mind. Yes. God will give you knowledge, the mind, inspiration. Ex exactly. See, see, without without acquiring the knowledge for the use of those materials, they will be useless. Okay. Without acquiring the knowledge of how to use those things, they will be useless. See, see, my brother, this is the thing, thing I want to say. Eh? We need not to always see ourselves as being used. See, if we understand humanity, the history of humanity, hmm? We will see ourselves not as uh, uh, always at the bottom, but we see ourselves on the on the on the on the in the process of society evolution. See, that is what every every one of us is going through. Okay, but our own societies are still behind. We need to catch up. Okay, if then, what is true test of development? Where we build a society that everybody is able at least to, to feed themselves. Okay? Simple. Simple. Okay? So, Simple. That, is, that, is so what, that is what we are trying to do. And, so and many of the things that that is holding us back, I will tell you, based on what we have been talking about from the beginning, are not caused by anybody else. Else, it's caused by us. Okay, many of the okay. things we are going through, many of the things we are going through, are caused by us. Um, right? thank you so much. Yes, you said the true test of development is. Being able to feed ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Are you aware that in the global system, mm. to today, mm. do you know why the lands of Africa are lying fallow? Why? Because our governments go for loan. Okay. And part of the requirement of that loan is that use the money to buy food for your people. Okay. Don't plant the food in no, your own home. I, 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 I would no, disagree. no, I'm coming. I'm, I would disagree. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. You see, you see, it's not about disagreement. It is happening everywhere. Okay, let me let now, me tell you. Why, this, let me tell you why I disagree. So, so, let me tell you why I disagree. I told you before. I come from a family of farmers, right? My father, my 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 father's brothers were great farmers. Okay, in their in their in their space, and they have land and they are dead now who to continue farming who should take about the land the sons okay their children uh, now how many how many, about, how many times have we had have we gone on interlude eh? 10 times uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, see, let's say we have been on this on this podcast for longer than necessary okay uh yes. but but all the things we have, we have been talking about are important you see we cannot we cannot finish all these topics okay but let's let's just conclude this one see the only thing i would say is this uh, there are so many systems okay which may not be very beneficial to us at the moment okay but i don't i don't believe they were they were designed not to benefit us specific, specifically okay i don't think they were designed not to benefit us okay like i said earlier they were designed to benefit the powers who de who designed it? Okay. Now we hold are on, hum we are on, human hold on, beings. Hold on, hold on. So they were designed to benefit those powers 
who designed it. Okay, but there are so many, so many small countries who were not were were aligned. You can look at South Korea. You can look at uh, Singapore. You can look at the Middle East today. Okay, you can look at China. Okay, they were not flourishing by the time these systems were developed. Today, they are flourishing. Okay, so if these countries can use the same system we complain about to become what they are today, okay, and you and me know that there are so many things that would would be would, would be better today if our own government our leaders our politicians have done the right things look at how much money our politicians take away from from our countries okay we all our countries is always going back to the IMF world bank to borrow money the money is a fraction of the money that our own people steal away from our, from our countries. So, my brother, the point is this. We can do a lot better. That is why we need a new generation of leaders. Okay. Now, not just leaders, but thinkers. Okay. Not just exactly. thinkers, but not just Thinkers, but doers. Okay. Now, um, for me, I've said it severally that I don't wait for government. Okay. I don't depend on government because if you depend on government, you will never achieve what you're supposed to do. I have young people now who are making a living out of the test skills I'm teaching them, and they always call to appreciate. Good. And I want to do more. Very good. I woke up with them in mind. I woke up with the future generation in mind. I woke up with what can I do for Africa to become like China? That we don't need to borrow or we don't need to beg. What can we do? We have every resources. That is why one of the core agenda of Pan-Africanism is let's start from what we have and begin mm. to build. Okay. No complaints. No, we were arguing, but I wasn't complaining because yeah. I know no amount of complaint will make Objecting. somebody say, yes, nothing will yeah. change your complaints. You have to move into action. You have to think innovative solutions. You have to think where is this going and all that. For our governance system, it is also a. It has been a brainwash. Mm. Remember, they said it is bad people that go into politics. <laughs> if, you're person, if you're a good person, stay somewhere. Don't go into politics. Yeah, but that is a brainwash. Now there are new crop of people coming, and we have started from everywhere across the world. Yeah, we believe in Africa's development. Good. We believe that Africa must take shape. We believe that Africa should not be seen as poor. We believe that Africa must be given a voice in global issues. We believe that we might not be, we should not be treated as slaves. When we talk about even slavery, for me, it is nothing. To me, the slavery, the slave trade, which is the buying of human beings. Is far better than the buying of the mind. Okay. I agree totally. So let's forget about slavery. It has happened, it is gone. It's gone. Okay. What is our mindset? Good. Is our mindset towards development of our people? Because if in America we have tornadoes, hurricanes, mm -hmm. Destroying their system. Yeah. Uh, destroying things. 
in China, we have China, Philippines, we have tsunami. Yeah. <laughs> when you come to Africa, okay, what we have is bad leaders. <laughs> greedy is bad leaders, greedy politicians. But I always say these are not products of the whites. Okay. They are not the one who made it. Okay. They are the product of our society. Okay. The question is our family system. Today, somebody steals money from government, goes to their village, and they give them title. Oh, Chengdu. Okay. Chief one. Okay. And that is what we value. Somebody comes to build a house in the village. And nobody questions, how did he make the money? Mm. So it is not just only the political leaders. The traditional leaders who also sell lands to about three, four people, and they begin to fight, fight. over yep. one land. They are all part of this. So looking at this critically, if we want to talk about true development in Africa, we must start from our family system. Okay, I agree. We might not see, we might not see the development we expect, the system we expect today, tomorrow. But we must start from somewhere. We must start from today. Begin to change the mindset of the younger generation. Begin to change the mindset of the people. And we believe Every seed, when it's sown, will grow to become a tree. And when a tree is grown, it begins to what? Bear fruit. And then when it bears fruit, it multiplies. So no matter what. Kofi, Kofi, on that, on that note, eh? on that note, you have, said, you have said it all. Okay? You have said it all. See, let's, let's end, it, end on that note. You have said it all, okay? We have the power to transform Africa from where it is to where we want it to go. We have the power to do this. See, uh, I tell you, I have enjoyed talking to you today, okay? Yes, we have a uh, butt head, and that's good. <laughs> see, see, see. Some people think that arguing is wrong. My brother, so I, I, like I said, I, I was saying, see, people, some people might think, oh, arguing is, is bad. No. See, I tell you, without arguing and talking things and challenging each other's mindset will not grow. And that is, that is one thing that we as Africans don't do. Like you mentioned before, we don't challenge our leaders. We don't challenge our elders. And we need to start doing that. And we need to challenge ourselves. Okay? We need to challenge what we think we know. Okay? Because I will tell you, there are so many things that we Africans think we know that are not actually taking us to where we say we, we want to go. Okay? If you say you know something and you're working with it and he doesn't lead you to where you want to go, we need to start challenging those things. Yeah, that is why in Ghana we say Sankofa, Yenchu. Mm. What does that mean? Go back, go back from the beginning. Okay. Or going back to the beginning is not forbidden. Mm, mm, mm. What we need to do is we have to sit down as Africans. Yeah. What do we need? We have the best of our brains yeah. in Europe, in America. What do we need now? All we need is to embrace where the world is going now and then get the right people, get the people with the right mindset to come together and then let's build the Africa we want. There's nobody who is going to build the Africa we want for us. America will never do that. Nobody. Europe will never do that. 
Nobody will do that if we don't build it ourselves. Yes, agreed. Agreed. And that is, and we have to look within the resources we have, the human capital we have, the natural resources we have. What can we do with it? Yeah. And it is something that is very, very important. Very good. Our government, we don't blame them. <laughs> but <laughs> for me, if everyone who is in political position, who is in leadership, begin to think of the future generation, mm. but not themselves, mm. everything will be better for Africa. Wow. Let's think of tomorrow. We are never going backwards. We have to go forward. And in going forward, we need a change of mentality. We need a change of approach. We need a change in doing things. Even if we don't have the everything, all the resources, there's a country that do not have one resource. Yeah. All they have is human. And they are striving. They are striving. They are doing well. So let's stop even though by do you know why? Do you know why? Resources. Do you know why? Because they are using the main resource. The main Which resource. Is the that is the brain. My brother. So let's stop the over reliance on natural resources. Whether we have gold, we have silver, we have oil, let's stop the over reliance on that and begin to develop the human mind. That's it. That's the more it. we develop the human mind, the more we develop our people, the more we develop the younger people, that is where we will see the true development of Africa. That's it. John. Thank you, thank you very much for being a great, great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure too. Yeah. And hope to see you um, sometime again soon. Yes, very soon. Very see, we still have so many things to things to discuss. Okay. So let's yeah. come back and, and continue the discussion. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.